what is a sensory box? Um, a sensory box is a small portable box that we can fill with items that stimulate all of our senses. Now, I've talked about senses before in dis some discussions about mindfulness and grounding. Um, the items should be small and the box should be able to fit in the learner's bag. Um, the box should contain, as I say, items that can uh, be used to simulate touch, smell, taste, sight and sound. Um, so just giving you some exa examples here. Um, for touch, it could be something, you know, soft or a fidget toy, something velvety, something spiky, if you like that sort of thing. I don't know. Um, some people prefer more sort of like a, a hard surface um, and some people prefer more of a soft surface. So whatever you prefer, you know, this is your sensory box and it should be designed around your needs. Um, so smell, maybe a cloth sprayed with some essential oil. Um, a lavender bag or a sample of your favourite perfume. So taste. One thing I would say about taste is you don't want to put something in your sensory box that's going to, you know, be sticky or I would suggest definitely more sort of boiled sweets, chewing gum, tea bags, maybe some dried fruit, something like that, rather than, you know, chocolate biscuits, because it's it's not particularly practical for the sensory box. Um, so sight, maybe photographs of family or friends or something that makes you happy to look at. Um, sound, headphones to plug into your phone to listen to some calming music or a podcast. Maybe a small music box. You might have seen them. There's those tiny, tiny music boxes where you wind them around and it plays like the Game of Thrones theme or something. Um, or so maybe something that rattles or a fidget toy might be a, a good idea. So. As I say, we can adapt our sensory box to match our needs or interests or personalities. Um, and we've made our own sensory boxes to go through yeah. with you today. So <laughs> shall we do it so that we go through a sense each? Like, try. so I have this gorgeous biscuit tin from my grandma <laughs> that's got loads of cats on it. Um, I've and got a I've... mundane plastic box. <laughs> see it doesn't matter what uh, to be fair like this so this box it could do with being a bit smaller but I didn't have a smaller box to hand now if I was going to take this out if I needed it you know and um, say I was a learner and I wanted to take it to school I would probably look for a smaller box because it doesn't need to be this big yeah. but it can be as, as big or small as you need it to be so Kelly, if I wanted we... to be really impractical, I would put my dog in my sensory box. So he would do that. <laughs> yeah. It's quite yeah. impractical. How big yeah. is your dog? How? How big is your dog? It's only a Shih Tzu. Oh, we... it's a big Shih Tzu. A big oh. Shih tzu. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, you could, but maybe don't. No, maybe don't. So, mm. should we start with sight? I don't think you can see it. Shall I take my? I don't have to take my background off. Yeah. If you do. Uh, what got Much better. Okay. So this is my sight one. <laughs> so this is um Wembley last year, Sheffield Wednesday versus Barnsley. And that little picture there, that little little Tabutio figure, is Josh Windax, um, who scored the winning goal. So that's a happy memory. So that's why that's in my sensory box. Oh, that's so sweet. I have a fairly similar one, actually. Well, I have a picture of Kevin De Bruyne, who's <laughs> my favourite player for Manchester City. Um, and yeah, similar sort of thing. I look at him and feel nothing but joy and pride. Um, so that's why he's in there. I got some postcards from Manchester City and I had to make a choice between whether to include him, Grealish, Foden or Diaz. And he he won. So that's why that's Kevin's nice. in there. Okay. <laughs> um, what have you got for sound? I think this one's really difficult. OK, so I put in here my wonderful Apple Max headphones. Actually, I can talk about the sound more. It's not necessarily um, a sound thing like that plays, but a particular piece of music so 
when I'm having a bit of a rough time, I always play a song which nobody will know called it's well, there's two actually. Um, one is the book by somebody called Drake White, and Drake White sings one with somebody called something McAnally. And one one of those songs is Every Day is Once in a Lifetime. So that's the first song. Um, the second song is quite important to me because it gets to me through tough times. It's called The Close to Clear. And basically what the song is telling you is that everything's okay. Try something new. Don't be scared of trying something new. And I think that I find that very, very helpful to listen to when I'm going through a tough time, that everything will be okay. You're okay to try something new and, and get it wrong. So that's my music, really, that I would listen to on, on those headphones. Really lovely. Maybe we could put the YouTube clips in the in the description so that maybe other people could listen. Yeah, the very, 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 when you listen to the lyrics, it, it cheers you up a little bit. So it's quite, quite nice. That's nice. I also have my headphones that I put in my box too. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'd listen to. I think, so there's there's a band that I love that calm me down um, and make me feel very at peace called Fever Ray. They're a Swedish synthwave band who I'm actually going to see next week and I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, I've got those headphones in. Um, but I also have something that kind of straddles between uh, like touch and sound. So I've got this bag of like old sort of foreign coins. Yeah. You know, when you come home from holiday and you've just got loads of weird coins yeah. um, in your pockets. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've got a lot of them in this little bag and I think it sounds nice and it feels yeah. the bag itself feels nice. It's quite um, it's, it is quite a sensory experience. This this bag itself um with the sound and the touch um yeah so i thought i'd i'd put that in there as well so that that does kind of straddle the line between feel and sound um yeah. which moves us nicely on to touch okay so touch for me <laughs> i've got the little fidget spinnery thing where you can touch and you can i'm sure people have seen this before you can touch <laughs> and move things Actually, normally I probably wouldn't do that. I like to doodle, so I like to that calms me the sense of doodling on on a pad and things like that. So unless I was really stressed, I, if I was really stressed, I would use this. But if I wasn't, I would I just do the doodling. It just calms me down. Just do the strokes of the pen. Cool. I've got found this little ribbon, which is it feels really sort of hardy, and um. It's it's quite nice to sort of just run you run through your fingers and it's I don't know if you can hear it's quite like this feels like an ASMR video this feels tiny, like it's descended into tiny, ASMR tiny bit tiny bit I can hear <laughs> yeah um but this is it, it feels really nice and it looks nice so I've I've put that in there but also I've got this little sort of fluffy ball which is quite nice it fell off I say it fell off I accidentally pulled this off my, <laughs> my hot water bottle so straight in the sensory box it went um so I've got quite a few for touch actually I've, I do find it quite but personally I think touch is quite a good one for for grounding and um yeah. having those sorts of those three different senses of touch those three different experiences of touch sorry so I do have this fluffy ball the um the like ribbon thing and the bag of coins and I think they all kind of provide a bit of a different experience so I, I threw them all in I thought why not they're small items and that's what it's kind of designed to be um taste taste okay so I've got my drink that I try not to drink much of the Dr Pepper Zero uh, and also I ate no jar advice and I bought a bit of pepper. <laughs> at least it's wrapped up <laughs> yeah I've got, I've, I've got a similar thing I mean I just I don't think it's worth throwing in like loose chocolate biscuits no no <laughs> I think that not. would be that would be misguided but something wrapped up like a bar of chocolate or mini rolls or something like that I, I think is a good idea I've got some um lime infused mango mm. which I absolutely love and it's quite a strong taste as well so that's quite good for grounding um mm. Smell. Oh, so I've got, I really like, but, but I don't use them enough, a little candle. 
Um, so I like the I used to like not so much anymore, but I used to like the Yankee candles because they used to, all the different smells that you can get. Mm. So that quite relaxes me when I when I like a candle and I've got lots of different kinds of candles. So I would go with that one. Yeah, I've got a similar thing. I've got um this oh, this um wax melt because yeah. they're quite strong smells wax melts um so i've got this spiced orange wax melt which i haven't put in the wax melt burner yet yeah so i thought fling it in there and i've also got some um coconut oil as well um which i think smells really nice and you could also if you wanted to if you had some essential oil in your um sensory box sometimes it's a good idea to put it on your pulse points on say like behind your ears or your wrists um sometimes it's quite good because then you can carry that kind of sensory um experience around with you a bit more and um it can it can also just be like a little boost of confidence just think thinking i smell great who doesn't love to feel like that <laughs> yeah i have a favorite perfume it's um is it armani it's been around a long time now i can't think what the word is for it it's armani and it's just in the silver tub and i just love that smell um don't wear it often enough these days in the office i'm in the office but I, like I don't know that one. one. Uh, yeah, I think not being in the office. I think office. it's called Man is She or something like that. Uh, um, right. Yeah, no, I don't know. I love that. that smell. It's pretty expensive, though. Well, those little, like, samples, the, the little yeah. perfume samples, I think you used to get them in magazines, but those days are gone. Gone. It's <laughs> but... <laughs> smell thing. <laughs> um they're they're quite good for boxes like these because they're so small. Rather than putting, like, a big, expensive bottle yeah. of yeah, perfume in there. If you do have a few like perfume samples knocking about, they're quite good to to be putting in in here. Um, another thing, so I've got this, and I didn't put it in, but I should have. And this is, I don't really have any fidget toys, um, but I've got this like little water game. I don't know if you can oh, see yeah. that where yeah. you press the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's going in now. There, yeah. that's my yeah, final that. bit. Excellent. So I think um, hopefully people have learned quite a lot from looking at our sensory boxes as well um, <laughs> and finding out more. Actually, I should have mentioned that on the back, now we can see in the background, on the back that's straight white on that picture there with the hat ah. on. So I went to see him last year. I've seen him twice, but I've seen him last year in Newcastle that was. So I'll just sort of point that out since I've removed my Pearson corporate background. <laughs> um, thank you so much, um, Hattie, for talking us through that. I think people um who are listening that are looking to support particularly learners with different that are differently abled or, or any learners that are particularly having difficult challenges at the moment will really appreciate that advice and hopefully we've given them some practical tips to support them so thank you very much and uh, happy for coming on and talking to us about this no thank you for having me i think it's a really important conversation to have and it doesn't have to be daunting it can be easy conversations and we ultimately want everyone to feel empowered to have them. We want teachers to feel empowered to be able to speak about things like mental health and well-being. And we want learners to have the language to be able to talk about it themselves as well. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you.